Greetings, people of Earth. Welcome back. My name is Jax, and today we are talking about another dating superpower, compatibility. So, if you didn't know, compatibility is one of the most, if not the most, important central characteristics in order to make your relationship last. What I mean by that is compatibility is the basically the ability that you two are going to work together long term. So there's there's some short term compatibility things. So for example, if you find somebody really physically attractive, you know, they just have something that like oof, or there's some kind of thing that happens on your first or second date that just makes you think like, man, this person's impressive. Like, you know, those things help with compatibility, but they're short term. Real compatibility are simple things and complex things. First of all, compatibility, say, say I want to have five kids, you know, I want to have five kids, and we're going to live on the farm. And they're going to run around like crazy and do what they're going to do. And they're going to, you know, stub their toes and blah, 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 blah. But I want to have five kids live on the farm. And that's that. If I meet somebody who does not want to have kids, or doesn't see themselves living on a farm, suddenly we are not compatible you know we can have all of this physical attraction and our our thoughts about the universe and life and how we see the future they might be all the same but at the end of the day if my partner wants to live in the city and have a cat and i want to have five kids and two dogs on the farm there is no amount of compromise that will really make both of us happy now, you can improve your compatibility with somebody by being flexible, by, you know, feeling like, well, you know, I could be happy anywhere as long as I am with somebody who loves me and, you know, treats me well. Um, I really don't mind. That can really help your compatibility, you know, the, the ability to be flexible and to understand that you can find happiness anywhere in any shape or form. That makes compatibility a lot easier but it still doesn't account for some of those fundamental differences. I have dated people where I have completely opposite political views than they do. You know, we, we completely disagree on politics and you can absolutely make that work, but it needs to be done with some nuance and being a little bit careful. Um, discussions of certain topics, sometimes you might have a red line where no, no, we do not talk about this particular political issue because one, it doesn't affect our relationship and two, you and I are not going to be the ones that sort it out for the rest of the world. Um, but you need to be careful with that because I've also been in relationships where we view things politically different and either myself or the other person won't let it slide, you know, will not say, won't just like, won't just be happy, you know, um, and if it's an issue that you care about and you think is really important, then by all means, go for it. But just understand that it could be to the detriment of your relationship. So compatibility works in the long term. It works in the short term. Um, I think you can definitely make yourself more compatible with somebody. You know, you can, you can change your life to an extent in order to make sure that the person that you want to be with is compatible for you and I think we all do this a little bit when we get into a relationship this is the thing that um, a lot of people get upset when their friends get into a relationship because it's like man every time you get into a relationship you change some of that change is to try and be more compatible with your partner and your friends are the first people that pick up on this your friends are the ones that go like oh man he's like changing for this guy and he's crazy and like it's not gonna work um, yes and no. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes we do change ourselves in certain ways, or I think a better word for it is we modulate ourselves. You know, we're not, we're not exactly changing exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it, but we are modulating what we believe and what we have in our views in order to be more compatible with our partner. So that that's kind of the the basic overview of compatibility i think 
it's really nice to meet somebody that you're just totally compatible with. But if you are 100% compatible with them, you risk losing some of the sort of attraction, you know, because we're, we're innately attracted to a, a wide range of things. And one of the things that you're often attracted to is the opposite of you. So if you are a very by the book rule following kind of person, you might be really attracted to a bad boy who breaks the rules. Or the reverse, you might be the bad boy motorcycle driving tough guy. And you might fall for the, you know, pretty librarian who enjoys a filing system and is quiet and soft spoken. There's all kinds of ways that humans sort of fall for one thing or the other. And at the end of the day, compatibility, the only way you can figure out compatibility is through open communication. Um, communication is probably the most important part of a relationship, but, and, and that's because it helps you figure out all the other stuff. And so figuring out compatibility, you don't, you don't have to go right out on the first date and say, okay, so I want five kids. I'm going to live on the farm. Um, we are going to vacation in Hawaii every second year, and we are going to spend Christmas at my parents and we'll spend new years at your parents. Um, you don't need to be coming out of the gate day one with that kind of stuff, but it you do need to make your red lines known. So if you have a red line, like I am not having kids, that's my red line. I'm not having kids. If that's your red line, that needs to be out in center pretty early on when you start dating somebody. I'm not going to like tell you that it's got to be the first or second date, but it should be early on. You should be letting people know, just so you know, no kids. Like, no, I don't want to adopt. I don't want to do any of this. I don't want surrogacy. I don't want, I don't want kids. That's totally fair. You know, as long as you've made your opinion and your point known, um, it's on your partner to respect that. You know, I think a lot of people hear somebody say like, oh, they don't want kids. And it's like, oh, well, they'll change their mind. Some people don't. Some people genuinely don't want kids. And that's totally fine. You know, um, it has to be known. And in order to be compatible with someone, you have to have expressed that and truly believe that and be fine with that. So that's that's basically what compatibility is. It's the communication between two people that lets each other know that they're kind of on the same page and they want the same things. Because in a relationship, if you want the same thing as your partner, truly, if you truly want the same thing that your partner wants, that relationship is going to go pretty well because you're both going to be striving to achieve whatever you want to achieve. If it's being travelers, or if it's having a million kids, or, you know, it's doing volunteer work, or, you know, just having cozy nights playing video games and drinking tea together. Um, if it's talking philosophy and playing cards until like one or two in the morning, whatever it might be, if you have the same outlook on life and goals as your partner, I think that's a really healthy thing. There's, there's very few things where I think group think is healthy. You know, I think a lot of the times that we think in a herd and we think, well, I'm, I'm a left wing kind of person. So I've got to follow everything that the left wing political party says. I usually am pretty skeptical of that. But when it comes to compatibility and long term success in relationships, I think you do have to have a, a similar value system. You know, like if, if you don't have the same values as your partner, compatibility is going to be hard, you know, like if I, if I have the opinion that uh, partners shouldn't sleep with other people while in a committed relationship, and my partner has the opposite view that it's totally fine to sleep around and text all these other boys and stuff, we're going to have a real problem, because I've been cheated on, and they think it's totally fine. That is an incompatible worldview. It doesn't work. You know, if you are a monogamous person, you need to date a monogamous person. You need to be compatible. It's that simple. I think it's an underrated point because I think a lot of people think that they can just change. They can either change the person they're dating or they can change themselves. And you might think, oh, yeah, changing myself is easy. Like if I want it, I can do that. But no, um, it is so hard to change yourself. It is so hard to develop a taste for something. You know, I, I told myself my entire life that I would like bananas and it took me years to actually like bananas. I, I, even to this day, I'm still a little skeptical. I, I, I it's hard. 
It's something that I actively wanted to change about myself and it took a long time. It took eating a million bananas that I didn't like until I was like, you know what, they're not that bad. But that was something that I wanted to change about myself and it was, it was hard work. It was honestly a struggle. So don't think that you can just change overnight to accommodate a partner. And you need to also ask yourself, is it worth changing? Because if you are in a relationship with somebody and you think like, man, if only I was really into skydiving or something, then our relationship would be great. Um, you might not actually want that, you know, like you might not actually need or want to change. And sometimes it's just not worth it. I think true compatibility is when two people realize that it's worth it to be compatible. You know, you want, you want to make an effort, you want to work hard, you want to communicate every day, you want to make sure that the other person is feeling loved and taken care of and supported. And that is kind of what compatibility works out well, you know, um, you can also go back to kind of the love languages, like, if you are someone who loves to show your love for somebody by giving them little gifts, and you are dating somebody who loves that, that's awesome. Because for me personally, um, big flashy gifts and stuff like that, don't really do a whole lot. Um, but you know, I've had partners who like gave me a bracelet or something just out of the blue. And, you know, just a little like, I don't know, just a little bracelet or whatever. And I gotta say, that has been so impactful. You know, it's like one of the most precious possessions I own. Um, and so like being compatible means working well on many different levels and being willing to give way sometimes. Um, when I asked my grandfather, who was married for 64 years, how, how he did it, how, how do you stay married for 64 years? The first thing out of his mouth was, you need to be willing to give way, you need to be willing to compromise and be compatible in those ways. He said that there are so many people who spend so much time thinking that they're right and they're the one that knows it all and everybody doesn't. And even just having that ability to say like, oh, I could be wrong. That's really attractive. That's really good, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, you will only ever be in relationships with people that you're compatible with on some level, you know? Because you're not gonna get into a relationship that just doesn't work from the beginning. Like, why would you get into a relationship with somebody you don't find attractive, you don't see value, you don't have long-term shared goals, um, you completely work at odds to each other, you don't find attractive. Like, all of these things are elements of compatibility. And it just matters finding a person who will put in the effort, who wants what you want, who sees the world in a similar way. Nobody's going to see it the same way, but in a similar way. And you're willing to go through life together on this crazy journey. So that's what compatibility is. And I sure hope you have it or you find it. And that's basically all I'm going to say today. So thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, like the video. And as always, guys, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.